Hey Brigandine enthusiasts, welcome back to Kingdom Cast. And today we're going to talk about the Holy Gustava Empire. So we're going to go over this. This is for the new Brigandine game called Le The Legend of Renarzia. Sorry. A lot of the time I just say Legend of Forcina, and I'm so used to saying that, but uh, with this new game, it's, there is a the in there. So as far as like a describer modifier goes, <laughs> there is a the in the in a game as far as the title is concerned. So yes, this is Brigandine, the Legend of Renarzia. So I just want to clarify that. But uh, we're going to talk today about the Holy Gustafa Empire. So we're going to talk about it. I'm going to talk about my thoughts and ideas and connections as towards the older Brigandine game, Legend of Forcina. I hate calling it the older game. I'm just so used to playing it all the time. I play the Grand Edition all the time, do the multiplayer and stuff, and I have a lot of fun with that. So, you know, I played through all the countries multiple, multiple times, and uh, I, I thoroughly do enjoy the older game. I think this new game, there's a lot of connections in here, which is going to be great because there's going to be so many connections. You can be like, oh, this is like this older country here. And, you know, as far as like a total story tie in, we'll see if that, you know, comes to play. But uh, this is going to be really, really fun. So today we're going to talk about this and um, we're going to, I'm going to show you something here that uh, you might be interested in seeing, but um, there are some who call me Tim. So yes, he is here. Tim is very powerful. Knight. He's the leader of this country here. So um, we're going to talk about the Holy Gustava Empire. Let's get into it. Let's see if there is a connection here to which country and what it could potentially be. So, all right. A long time ago, in a poor and desolate northern area, deprived of the blessings of mana, Asid Gustav led a group of wanderers displaced by other countries, forming a nation now governed by the Gustav clan that inherited his will. The country's locality, history, and lack of brigandine was the source of much scorn from other countries. But the Gustav clan unified itself through the worship of their hero, Sin Gustav, and the Zohar religion, building itself up into a mighty empire. So, all right, we're looking at uh, a clan that turned itself into an empire. So this looks like, this looks like something out of, uh, like if, if we were to take reality, we were going to think about like Slavic clans and, uh, Northern clans uniting together to make like, a, a King of Kings, uh, making a, uh, like a high King, a clan King, which turned into an empire. What would, it, what would I have to describe this as? This sounds very Norgardian like. This sounds very much like Norgard here. Norgard is the northern country, and uh, they have to fight. You know, it's 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 a very wild country ruled by wolves and giants. You know, it's it's um it's one of those countries you, you have to fight to survive in. You know, it's it's not just an easy country. It's not an easy land to live in. You you really have to. You know, fight for. Fight for your position in the world. You know, and so it seems like it's kind of like that. This could very well be like a Norgardian country here. This could be very much like Norgard. So let's go ahead and read about Tim Gustav here. Okay. And we'll see what we can see with that. So let's go ahead and uh, do this sort of thing here. So Tim Gustav. Tim Gustav, character voice. Takiyua Egushi. Gender male, age 23. Intro class, Kaiser. Profile, the 13th Empire of the Holy Gustafa Empire. The only major power of the continent on the continent without a Burgundine. Born from an impoverished land to the north, the Gustav clan is looked down upon as poor filth by other countries for their history and was long subjected to the oppressive rule of neighboring countries. Nevertheless, the Brigandine Less country has overcome adversity to become a mighty empire, celebrating unity 
and the spirit of rebellion as its cornerstones. This young empire now aims to conquer the continent in order to vindicate their beautiful blood of the clan. So this has sort of a... You know, th this has a very Norse-like feel to it, which Norgard did too. And I'm just going to go ahead and just call it. I'm thinking this is Norgard here. This is the new Norgard, according to Brigandine. Uh, if you got any opinions, ideas, let me know. It just feels like this, you know, according to their their clan blood. You know, uh, Brangian was, she was kind of pissed because she wasn't, you know, up in charge because, you know, men ruled at that time in Norgard and she couldn't become the ruler. And she felt she was supposed to rule rule based upon blood. So this is about the blood of the clan, you know, and the power of the clan and all that. You know, Vinard got to rule, but he was he was a cousin. You know, he wasn't like main in, in line. But um, there's a lot of stuff talking about mighty, you know, being um, vindication, you know, spirit of rebellion. They're looked down upon. You know, this this is something that Norgard was in conflict with the new with Elmeki at the time, and they weren't doing that well. They really weren't. Um, and so what ended up happening is, you know, as soon as, you know, there were, well, there was a battle in Legend of Forcina and uh, Zemeckis gets to kill the king of, I think it was, but was King Dormant? Yeah, it was King Dormant of Norgard. He gets to kill King Dormant and it was, there, there was a little bit of magic involved. Bolnoil stopped King Dormant so Zemeckis could get an easy attack and uh Zemeckis thought he got the win just by because he was powerful but really Bolnoil played his hand in the role to um kind of help them out but according to this just this just screams Norgard to me it really does and so Norgard is pretty much fighting a lot they typically fight a lot it's seen that Norgard could have been fighting Padstow. They didn't really attack Leoness because there wasn't any major wars or anything. Leoness was, or Leonia was independent for a long time. And Norgard was pretty much at war with Elmechia for however long they were at war with. I don't know. Um, I can't remember if there was a describer as to how long they were in war for, but they were at war with them. Potentially they were at war with Padstow as well before Padstow turned to New Elmechia. And so Norgard's been fighting for a long time in Grand Edition and Legend of Forcina. And this country has been an impoverished country, looked down upon, and, um, you know, they're, they're, they proclaim themselves to be a mighty empire. So they want to conquer the continent, get vindication, you know, Norgard needed some time so he he gave up a castle to get some uh time for restoration to go back out and fight norgard's been fighting for a long time and it seems as if this country is too and it's a northern country and it this just seemed this screams norgard to me just let me know what you think down below as to what country this could possibly be i really think this is the new norgard although this isn't like a a deep blue color this is just kind of a gray color it does what i think this flag is is a wolf in there so it just reminds me of norgard with the nor you know vinard's attack is his final attack was called wolf fang and uh you know it, he had his normal caladbog attack and wolf fang and now they've got a flag with a wolf on it and like all these little connections here i get this whole this is norgard feel okay you can let me know what you think but i feel this is norgard all right let's move on to the next character here let's see what uh let's see what they're all about okay so this would be not that so scrolly parts not working right all right so we've got hazaroff all right character voice is Shigeru Chiba. Gender male, age 45, initial class berserker. Commander of the northern region of the Holy Gustava Empire. 
He is the uncle of the 13th Empire, Tim Gustav. And one of the strongest warriors in the Empire. The A coinciding... Oh, sorry. A condescending man by nature. He often belittles Tim by claiming he could not have achieved his position without his uncle's help. He has a weakness for drinking, and every time he gets drunk, he complains about how difficult ruling the northern region is, demanding that Tim share his wealth and send him beautiful women. So this guy is um, a bit of a lush, and uh, you know he he wants stuff sent his way. You know I get this feeling, you know, because he's like the uncle. I get this whole Lewin tale. I think, yeah, Lewin tale. I almost want to say um, Paul Mighty's, but I think Lewin tale maybe fits. Lewin tale might fit this maybe a little bit more. Lewin tale was a little bit disappointed in Vinard being the ruler, and he and he kind of just he kind of just leaves, and then he comes back when you actually do something. You know, and you actually take some castles. He comes back. He's like, you know what? You might actually be a good ruler. And he, so he comes back. So this is like warring little clans within these. And Norgard is about like these little warring clans that were trying to work together. But beforehand, they were all kind of like maybe not fully together on one side. It was just very segregated little pockets of tribes, it seems. And so this Hazarov, I just get this Lewintail feel. If you think he's more like a Palm Mighty's, let me know why. I get this, I, I know Paul Mighty's, you know, there's a cutscene with Yvain and Paul Mighty's, and uh, Paul Mighty's has this wine that um, Yvain asks for, and Paul Mighty's like, man, I was saving that for a special occasion, you know, and, and Yvain's like, well, you want to know more about runes, don't you? And Paul Mighty's like, well, pff, okay, fine. You know, he's he's a little upset because it's his, either his favorite wine or maybe Paul Mighty's is also a lush, I don't know. But um, it, it doesn't really describe Paul Mighty's that way. But it does describe this guy as a lush. Um, so I I don't remember Luinto being one of those. But just the character background and the story, this feels almost very identical to to Luinto. Let me know what you think. I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments down below. And uh, if this is in the future and you're coming back and telling me now, no, this is the way it was. Oh, that's great. Thank you. Thank you from the future. But I'm doing this right now <laughs> according to the time as to when it's been released. So, yeah, but let me know what you think about uh, Hazarov. And so he's going to be a Berserker class here, just like uh, uh, Lewintel was. So he's age 45. So he'll probably be kind of like Lewin. He might be like a close class. And he might be like level 19, level 18 Lewintel type of guy as far as class goes he might be like that high on the list and uh i don't know we'll see we'll see what this is so all right so let's move down to the next character here coco <laughs> coco <laughs> coco <laughs> coco can we please move the screen and not the whole thing thank you there we go coco thank you coco you're you're absolutely fantastic I'm gonna love playing as I'm gonna love playing as Coco. I'm pretty sure I will. Coco, character voice, Ryoko Yazuki. Gender female, age 38. Initial class is a healer. Profile, commander of the southern region of the Holy Gustava Empire and aunt to the 13th Empire Tim Gustav. The combination of her pride and power hungry personality gives her a special kind of seductiveness while she has a weakness for young handsome men she is merciless when it comes to younger beautiful women as a brilliant zoa rune knight since youth she has made a name for herself on a battlefield though aggressive and showy battle through aggressive and showy battle techniques leading to her current position so she is a healer she is a healer. Now, hmm. Let's see. I'm trying to I'm trying to come up with an idea as to who this could be kind of like. It's um um 
I don't know. I'm not I'm not really picking up on anything. I, she could be kind of like a new kind of character. There wasn't any besides Brangian, I I think this 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 seems like this could be like Brangian. The reason I wasn't thinking that is because though she's not an archer class. She's a she's a healer, right? But um she's very aggressive and showy. Um Brankian had a certain kind of grit that typically female knights don't usually have back at this particular time in this kind of a game, uh, especially with Legend of Forcina. Here there seemed to be a lot more, which is actually very interesting and, and very nice. But here's the thing. She does seem to be kind of like a Brankian. Brankian, Yvain was smitten with her. It seems like other knights have, might have been smitten with her in a way. Uh, but maybe Coco, there's more knights that are smitten with her than there were with Brangian. From Grand Edition or from Legend of Forcina. It's uh, this whole talk about she has a weakness for young, handsome men. She is merciless when it comes to younger, beautiful women. So she is kind of a very jealous person. Brangian was kind of a jealous person, was but it was really based upon the fact that she wasn't able to rule. Uh, she could have also been maybe a jealous person in a way too, but it seems kind of likely that Coco is the new Brangian as a healer class. And so it just says healer. I don't know if uh, what tier she would be. She might be middle tier. I don't think she'll be beginning tier because she's age 38. She's already, you know, she's older. So I don't think they're going to make her initial that sort of class. But um, I'm thinking she's going to be a decent knight. She's going to be a middle tier class healer. And uh, I get this. Maybe she's like a Brangian. Maybe, maybe she's the character. Let's go on with the rest of the characters here because there's a lot more characters here. There are six characters here. So maybe Ginger is more like Brangian. I don't know. Let's see. Let's see. I'm guessing I'm just going to go ahead and just throw the dart in the wall. I'm going to throw it right in your face and say, boop, that's Brangian. You know, you let me know what you think. I'd love to hear it. But uh, I, I get this feeling. She's probably that. So sorry. I'm, I'm talking. I'm, I'll stop uh, going on and on about that. But I think it's Brangian. I think this is the new Brangian. Let me know what you think. Let's move on down the line to Ginger. So let's talk about Ginger here. Ginger in this game is not a Ginger. <laughs> She's not a red hair. She has she has blonde hair. So that's that's interesting. But um, we could call her Ginger Gustav. We could call her Blondie Gustav. I don't know. I guess we have to call her Ginger Gustav, don't we? But maybe I could make up a nickname. I could call her Blondie Gustav. Uh, but what do you think? What do you think about that nickname? Is that a good nickname or is that is that not right? I don't know. Okay. Character voice is Amiri Kato. Gender female, age 22. Initial class, sorceress. All right. Profile, the younger sister of the 13th Empire, Tim Gustav. Man, he's got a big family in rule. Legend has it. The Empire gave birth to her in the Zoar Shrine after being struck by lightning, leading to rumors that she is blessed with Zoar's protection and the gift of farsight or farsightedness. Her love for the Empire goes beyond normal love between siblings, and her steadfast devotion to him causes her to watch over him like a guardian angel. She deals with anyone who dares resist the Empire swiftly and mercilessly. On the battlefield, her cold, calculating tactics turn her into a demon that strikes fear into the hearts of enemies. So she's age 21. She's a sorceress. She's probably going to be like uh, a Carlotta character. But, um, I mean, according to this, it's kind of giving me this Carlotta feel here. According to character... Uh, according to, according to like a Norgardian standard or thinking about Norgard, uh, who could this possibly be like here? 
Hmm. Who really seriously defended Vinard? Maybe Elaine? Or... I almost want to say... <clears throat> I almost want to say, like... I'm having a hard time. I'm thinking Elaine, Hector, and Carlotta. I'm having a hard time pinning a connection here. As far as, like, who was a serious, loyal devotee to Vinard, I guess Gwenglin would probably come to play. So... Is she kind of like a Gwengulin too? It's I don't know. It's I'm having a I'm having a tough time trying to connect this one here. But uh, she's on a battlefield calculating tactics. Turn her into a demon. She strikes fear in the hearts of enemies. Gwengulin was the main man for Vinard. He was um, the main man. She could be the the main woman for Tim. She could be the strategist for Tim. Uh, Maybe she is the new Goingulin. I don't know. It's one of those. I'm having a hard time. Maybe let's care. Let's move on ahead and let's let's look at some other characters and we'll come back and we'll kind of like talk about this and see what uh, see if see if there's any difference there. But I'm thinking Ginger might be the new Goingulin, but not a paladin, a sorceress, a female sorceress. So she goes to every length to to be protecting of them and she's got the gift of farsight so she's got like a either a psychic perspective or a uh, strategic mind frame and so that's exact so the strategic mind frame is what Gwynglin was and his dedication and loyalty to Vinard was paramount and so this ginger Gustav could very well be a as far as story goes a new Gwynglin let me know what you think in the comments down below. Let's move on. Let's move on, 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 on to Aslan or Alsen. Oh yeah, it's Alsen. Alsen. Here we go, Alsen. What are you all about? Character voice. Shinanor. <laughs> Shiganori Soya. Shiganori Soya. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm trying to say names right. Anyways, character voice, Shigadori Soa. Gender male, age 65, initial class champion. Profile, commander of the Holy Gustava Empire's Secret Service. He reports directly to the Empire. He is Tim's right-hand man and has served as a Grand Chamberlain since the previous Empire's reign. An accomplished martial artist, he is one of the Emperor's most distinguished knights. However, he is also known by his puppeteer Aslan moniker. As it's as if... Oh, hold up. Sorry. Let me read that again. It's as if he can breathe life into the puppets he carves. Though his puppet shows at a small... Through his puppet shows at a small theater known as Sin's Lodge, Peleus de Sin, or is it Peleus de Sin? He educates people of Gustafa's history and the teachings of Zora Rune. All right, this is very complex. I was thinking Coco was the Gwengulin, but she's definitely. I don't know if she is. I think maybe Aslan's a new Gwenglin here. Maybe they split it up. Like I was just doing Marvelia, and I was, I was thinking there's like two two new Bagdemaguses in the game. But I was thinking, well, he might fit Gwenglin a little bit more because he's like the commander of Tim Gustavo's Secret Service, so he's he's like the president's Secret Service agent, so. He might fit that more. He reports directly to the Empire. Tim's right hand man. This sounds more like a newer Gwinglin, though. But then again, Dillard was like a very loyal person, too. And uh, Dillard didn't really say much. But he was just a very loyal person overall. So. He has served as Grand Chamberlain. 
So he's actually like probably like a higher tier title there. So yeah, I'm uh, I don't know what to say. It's which one is Gwingulin? Is it is it Ginger or is it Aslan? Which one is the new Gwingulin? I'm having a hard time with this because maybe they just split up the roles and and made a couple stories that were kind of similar. And uh, they both kind of fit the role story-wise, but they're both kind of new characters. They could be just, you know, totally new in a sense. Um, uh, maybe this isn't Gwinglin. Maybe this is like a Yvain. Yvain was also very loyal knight. There was a lot of loyal knights in Norgard to Vinard. Once he starts really like pushing forward, he's, yeah. Um, you know, maybe Ginger is the new, you know what? Maybe Ginger's the new Morholt. Ginger's the new Morholt, right? I think maybe Ginger's the new Morholt right there. Maybe Ginger's the new Morholt and Aslan is a new Gwengulan. Maybe that's the case. Because Viner did put a lot of trust in Morholt. Although Morholt came from New Omechia. And, um... I don't know. I, I'm, having a, I'm having a really rough time with this. But it does feel like... This is a new Norgard country here. So let's go ahead. Let's check out the, the last character here. Leave all your comments down below. Let me know what you think. I'd love to hear it. And uh, we can probably discuss some of it. And we'll we'll talk about all of it. Jazz. Jazz. Wow. Let's talk about Jazz. So Jazz character voice is Madoka Asahina. Madoka Asahina. Gender, female, age 22, initial class, rogue. Profile, a rune knight from the United Islands of Marelva and a schoolmate of Tim's from his time at Marelva's Academy as a teenager. As a tattoo artist, she loves nothing more than giving tattoos to beautiful people. She came all the way to the Holy Gustava Empire in hopes of tattooing Tim. Like most Morelva natives, she is free-spirited and quite knowledgeable about much the continent. M about much on the continent. Jasmine's over-friendliness towards Tim is viewed with great suspicion by Ginger. So... She decided to leave from another country to come over here. She came from the United Islands of Morelvia. So now she's looking more like Morholt. Ah. Uh, but then again, she's a rogue. So I don't know what to say here. I don't really. Man, these last. These last characters here are just confusing the heck out of me. But I can definitely say with almost certainty that Tim is the probably the new Vinard. That this uh this Hazarov guy is the new Lewintail. And uh the other characters they get a little Coco Coco kind of feels like uh like a Brangian or Brangian. I don't know if people say Brangian, but I'm used to saying Brangian. But um, Coco's like the new Brangian. I wish I'd stop doing that. Uh, <laughs> trying to click buttons on here is, is kind of tough. And uh, Ginger and uh, Alsen. I think there's tie-ins to Gwingulin and uh, maybe Elaine. I don't know. I'm having a tough time with that. But let's talk about jazz and see if there's any serious connection here. It's it's hard to fully come up with an idea right now. I can't. Like, Morholt came from New Omechia. Um, because Morholt just thought that Feinerd had a, a better chance of winning than New Omechia did. So he kind of wanted to be on the winning team. And... Uh, but this is a little different, so maybe she's not like the Morholt. Because the fact is, she's a rogue class. So rogue class, I think that's the ninja class. 
And so she's going to be like the ninja class here. So she, she, she could be maybe like... I don't want to say Saraha. Saraha had almost no personal story. It's His story is about just doing his whole ninja business and just being done with life. And Kazen was... Kazen was just a, a counter personality to Saraha, really. It didn't really. Um, but who came to Norgard to maybe she's the new Noi in a way. So she likes Tim, or she wants to tattoo Tim because either she likes him or, well, she probably likes him. Um, but Ginger and Jazz are, <laughs> Ginger and Jazz, Ginger and Jazz are probably not going to have the best of uh, times together. So Ginger is a little suspicious. Ginger might, you know, maybe, I, I guess, have feelings, but. Jazz might as well, so Tim might be um, ha having, you know, two wife or girlfriend options here, I guess. I, I don't know. But um, she's from a different country and uh, all that, and she came and just a free-spirited woman. And I can't say she ties into Brangan because Brangan was tied to the country of Norgard. So Brangian is tied to Norgard. Uh, she's not tied to Norgard. She came from a different country. So I'm having a hard time pinning on like who this might be like. Is this like a Shootlius character or no? Nah, I don't know. I don't know who to describe Jazz as. And they say Jazz Jazz means or, or Jasmine. I guess that's her full name. Jazz is just short, but. Um, I'm having a hard time tying this one. I'm having a hard time tying this to some other older Burgundine character. If you can, if you can help me out with this one. Please let me know. I, I might be uh, just zoning out here. Maybe I'm just forgetting some of the characters. Because if I look, if I think about the characters, we've got what we've got: um, Vinard, Mo we got Vinard, Gwengulin, Morholt, Yvain, um, Paul Mighties, the Windtail. Road Bull. I think I said Elaine. Dillard, Actor, Patissia. Noi. You know what? I'm gonna go ahead. I'm gonna go ahead and pin Jazz on Noi. I'm gonna go ahead and say uh Jazz is Noi because Vinard had a love interest in Noi. Unfortunately, she had a disease and died from it uh, before fully winning the game. And she doesn't come back. Uh, Brangian, some people kind of suspect, well, you know, maybe Brangian and Vinard would have gotten married or something like that. But Brangian was pretty opposed to Vinard. She only liked him as a leader when he wins. <laughs> <laughs> when he takes, when he starts taking over a lot more territory, then she respects him more. But she was in line to be the ruler. So Brangian's in line to be the ruler. Um, Noi was never p a potential in line to be a ruler. If Noi would have survived, if Noi would have lived through her disease, Noi could have potentially become the next queen to Norgard. And this could very well be an absolute fact. So. And Noi was Noi was considered a genius. She was an uh, she was a uh, artist. I think she was a um, she was an actress. So she was in the art the business of the arts, right? Okay, so let's just theorize this for a second. She was in the business of the arts. She could have survived. Viner probably would have married her. Depending upon the scenario of whether you play in Grand Edition, if you force vassalize Leonia. Vinard kind of takes Leoness for his wife, and um, that happens that way. That's based upon a different timeline scenario. 
But the original timeline scenario, if Noi would have survived, Noi would have become the wife of Vinard. And Noi was an artist. She was in the... Um, if if she, if this was modern time, she'd probably have a bachelor's degree in arts because she was an actress, right? And so Jazz is a tattoo artist. So she's in the arts too, but it's not it's not acting. It's like literally tattooing. So she has to do with the arts. She she isn't of any kind of no. She, she's probably not of any kind of nobility. Maybe not even royal like Noi. I don't think Noi was. And um. She has this interest in Tim. She has the interest in the Empire, or the Emperor. And so, I just feel like there's this connection with Noi here. Uh, let me know what you think. I, you know, I know Noi was a healer. She's a rogue class. But I'm also, mostly what I'm trying to connect with these is story characters. Sometimes they might change up the roles as to what they do for a job or a, an action. But I'm trying to tie in the storyline characters as far as their story goes. More so. If I see a job class that fits two, then it it just like screams at me like, hey, 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 this is the new, you know, and uh, see how you can take that on and, you know, maybe go with it. So I'm getting this Noi feel here. I think I might be onto this. I think I might have figured out these characters. It's a little, it's a little up in the air, but I'd, I'd like to know your opinions on this as far as these characters go. Aslan could be the new Gwinglin. Uh Ginger could be the new, um, you know, like these characters could be what I, what I was talking about. But let me know what you think in, in the comments down below. I'd love to hear your opinions, but this is the end of Kingdom Cast. If there's more characters that come out, I will go ahead and talk about them. But um, that's pretty much that's pretty much all I have for this video. So I hope you enjoyed. Uh, comments, questions, concerns. I don't think there'll be any concerns, but you know, anything you want to talk about, please uh, help. Please, please help me in this too, because you know I'm trying to help promote the new Brigadine game and uh, and uh, for the American side. And so I will be doing videos of this game when it comes out on YouTube. So you'll see a lot of stuff on YouTube. But please come to Twitch, because as soon as the game comes out, I'll be streaming this almost every day, maybe every day on Twitch, and I'll be making videos for YouTube. So, you know, this this will be a big one to, um, to portray. And so I kind of like this empire because I do like Norgard too, but this is going to be a very interesting empire to play as. So I, I'm going to go ahead and say maybe my favorites might be uh, uh, Gwimol, the Republic of Gwimol, Shinobi Tribe and the Holy Gustava Empire. I might these might be my favorites. Uh, so I don't know. I'll see when I play through them and uh, all that. But yeah, this has been Kingdom Cast, the Holy Gustava Empire. I hope you enjoyed it, and I will see you next video. Please leave some likes if you want to, and uh, share this everywhere. And hopefully, we'll get more people to be. Uh, you know, to, to get to see this content and to get to see what this game's about. But uh, this has been my this has been my theorizing based upon all the knowledge of the past of of the last uh, Legend of Forcina game, the Brigandian game that came out so long ago. Playing it for years, talking about the storyline, studying the storyline, and uh, let me know if you think my connections are accurate or if you think that, you know, some are a little bit over here or over there. And I'll see you next video. Thanks so much for watching. Take care. When I say it is over! Answer my call!
victorious, sire!